back out of closed session at 8:25. Can you can I get a report out from Mr. Pinkney? The uh, council met in closed session on item A, conference with legal counsel regarding existing litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9D1. The case is Western Riverside Council of Governments versus City of Beaumont, and the case number is RIC 536-164. There was no reportable action that was taken in closed session. Okay, so we'll go ahead and begin the regular meeting. May I have a roll call, please? Councilmember Orozco? Here. Councilmember Knight? Here. Councilmember Condon? Here. Mayor Pro Tem White? Here. Mayor Lara? Here. Okay. Um, we're all present. Uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, with that brings us to item number one. Any one person may address City Council on any matter not on this agenda. If you wish to speak, please fill out a public comment form provided at the back table and give it to the City Clerk. There is a three minute limit on public comments. There will be no sharing or passing of time to another person. State law prohibits the Council from discussing or taking actions brought up by your comments. And with that, do we have a uh, request to speak? Yes, we do, Mayor. So I will go ahead and open public comment at 827. Judy Bingham. Judy Bingham, 115 Minnesota. The first thing I'd like to ask council is, does this city have any insurance? Just something that I've been thinking about. I believe if it is time for a real tea party in this city. If every taxpayer who has paid for phony sewer upgrades, fire stations, roads, numerous times over the past 10 years said, I won't pay for it again, then maybe council would notice. Regardless of how many consultants and attorneys are brought in, the burden of corruption is always on the taxpayer. So it really doesn't matter we are stuck with the decisions that you make tonight. One way or the other, we will be paying and paying. That is a constant. Oh, the names and faces change, but the citizens always get to pay the price, don't they? Thank you for your comment. Do we have any additional speakers? No other speakers, ma'am. I'll close public comment at 828. 829, excuse me. <laughs> and that brings us to action item two, retention of Oric Harrington and Stuck Life, Stuckley LLP to represent the city in connection with financial and restructuring challenges facing the city. Uh, Mayor, members of the city council, members of the public, um, this is a very important issue before the City Council and what we would like to do is read verbatim the staff report and we would request that the City Clerk uh, include this verbatim uh, in the written minutes so that it's very clear exactly what it is uh, that the City Council is considering. So with your indulgence, I'll, I'll, I'll take a, a minute or two to do that. This is retention of Oric Harrington and Sutcliffe LLP to represent the city in connection with financial and restructuring challenges facing the city. As the council is aware, the city is currently in a challenging financial situation. This condition is made exigent by the fact that a sizable judgment was rendered against the city in favor of W.R. Cog. In addition, the city has received Si recent sizable claims, including one uh, from the Beaumont 
Cherry Valley Park and Recreation District. The city also has several pending lawsuits. With these claims mounting, the city requires the assistance of a qualified law firm with expertise in the field of restructuring debt and dealing with creditors. In light of the exigent need for such legal assistance, the city attorney has contacted and interviewed partners uh, Mark Levinson and John Knox from the f law firm of Oric Harrington Sutcliffe and Sutcliffe. Oric has significant expertise in assisting public agency in connection with financial and restructuring challenges. The retention of Oric will play a vital role in the efforts to place the city on a sustainable financial path going forward. Given the current circumstances facing the city, the city does not have sufficient time to go through the RFP process. The city's professional services ordinance that allows the council to contract for professional services without an, an RFP process where exigent circumstances exist. Given the above and all the other facts and circumstances and issues with which the city is dealing, Current circumstances are exigent, and it is recommended the City Council retain the services of ORIC to aid the City in dealing with financial and restructuring challenges. The proposed legal services agreement is contained within the City Council packet for Council consideration. The hourly rates of ORIC attorneys are set forth in the proposed legal services uh, agreement. Thank you, Mayor. I would, I would add to that, as uh, came up at the beginning of the meeting tonight, um, as you know, we have a pending appeal, uh, and it has been stayed, and on uh, the 11th, the court granted an, ex an additional continuance or stay, and the next joint report from both WRCOG and the city will be due uh, 90 days from the date the, the the uh, continuance was granted. And so um, we are having discussions with WR COG uh, where there's a mutual effort to try to resolve the matter, um, but we have very limited time, um, it appears, based on the, uh, the, the existing 90-day continuance that was uh, generously granted by the court. Um, so uh, we don't have an indefinite period of time to try to come to a resolution with WR COG. Um, we have a, a very finite period within which to work with. And, uh, you know, an RFP process could take 60 days uh, to go through. The other thing is there are not a lot of law firms uh, in the state of California with significant um, Chapter 9 experience. and. I'm not aware of others that have both Chapter 9 experience, uh, debt restructuring experience, and also um, experience with uh, creative public finance. So, Thank you. Ms. Clerk, do we have any uh, requests to speak on this item? Yes, we do. With that, I'll open public comment at 8.36. Judy Bingham. Judy Bingham, 115 Minnesota. Limited time, this is an emergency. The city decided to appeal this lawsuit two years ago. What were they thinking? Was it Mr. Pinckney or Mr. Warney? Or was it Bob Dice, the guy I call the televangelist, who worked with this law firm in Stockton? and left that city with a $70 million sewer bond. Orrick Harrington will charge from $875 an hour for, for one attorney and lower rates are listed for others. How long will it take them to get up to speed? The city of Beaumont needs an attorney that follows state and federal laws and will represent the best needs of the cities, not crooks whose only interest is pillaging taxpayer money at the direction of council and with approval by council. To quote the state controller's report, the city management and the city council failed to exercise its fiduciary responsibilities in protecting taxpayer dollars. 
I say it's time for council to start spending their own money, like I have had to for years, to protect myself from the great city of Beaumont. You know, this is getting pretty old. How much money are we going to sink into this? And what is it going to get us? This is a risk. It's very risky. And I hope all the taxpayers know what you're doing. I see I'm the only one here tonight. Isn't that great? Thank you for your comment. I will go ahead and do we have any additional speakers? No other speakers. I will go ahead and close public comment at 839. So um, also I want to I want to clarify um, that the contract that is contained in the packet uh, would would um, the services that would be provided by ORIC and the scope of those services are laid out in the contract that's in the packet. Um, they would assist us with debt restructuring. Uh, the work that they would be doing would aid us and assist us in connection with uh, negotiations that we're currently involved in and potential future negotiations with creditors, um, but would not include would not include the filing of a chapter nine. That is not within the scope of the work. So I just want to make that very clear. Thank you. Any comments from council? I have some. Mayor Pro Tem White. Um, just to get a little more clarification. So right now, no one is recommending chapter nine at this point. That's correct. And you mentioned October 11th is the deadline. And what? Give me the. Um, the uh, importance of that deadline. What happens on October 11th? So we've already gotten continuances uh, of uh, of the appellate proceedings, and uh, the most recent one was granted on the 11th of this month, and it's a 90-day uh, continuance. And so at the end of that 90-day period, both ourselves, uh, uh, the attorneys for the city, and the attorneys for WR Cog would have to submit a, a joint statement regarding the status of their discussions, uh, their negotiations. Um, but, you know, the concern is that there's a limit on how many times an appellate court will grant you a continuance. The court has been very indulgent in allowing the parties the time it's already allowed. But, um, and, and we have been having discussions with WR Cog but we've, you know, we can't presume, we cannot presume uh, that the court would grant another extension. Um, so we have to go forward with the, uh, um, with the understanding that we may only have this additional 90-day extension before the court schedules uh, argument in the case. So what we're uh, what we are um, considering authorizing is. Um, uh, legal advice in restructuring our debt um, to meet that deadline of October 11th and continue to move things forward if we can with WR COG. That's correct. But at that point, we enter what may be considered phase two if we're not able to. And um, I'm, you know, I'm comfortable with the rest of you, I'm comfortable with moving forward with this as long as it's on a limited basis and that we understand that if we have to go to a phase two, that we are going to consider doing an RFP as we move forward, um, especially since, um, you know, that's, we ha that would not be exigent. We have time to prepare for, for the 90 days at that point for whatever phase two is. Yeah. So if uh, right now we have 90 days, and and what I understand you're saying is if, if we needed additional assistance uh, along these lines um, beyond that 90-day period, that um, you would consider, you would revisit the issue of, of, of uh, perhaps going out to RFP. Even if uh, the best recommendation at that time is that we continue with the same attorney, I still think we need to, at that point, bring it out to an RFP uh, for, for a longer term. I'm, I understand the exigent circumstances when we're talking about what we're talking about over the next 90 days and how long it takes to get an RFP up and running, but I think that if, if it appears that we're going past that 90 days, I personally would like to see um, RFQ or RFP to come back for us before we uh, move forward. Okay, okay, so 
if it goes beyond the 90 days, then you would want an item on the agenda to consider issuing an RFP for services beyond that. Correct. Okay. That, that's my. I don't know that I'm not. Don't need to put that in a motion tonight. If it, unless but we'll take that as direction from one council member to to staff, and there's no reason. I mean, you can request that an item be put on the agenda, and the city manager. Okay. Can do then that. that is do my you, request. Do you need consensus from council on that direction? I, you know what? I would feel more comfortable if we actually had a vote on that. Yeah, and then that way, there's no question. There's no question on what the the direction is, and it's actually in the minutes. It's clear. Yeah. Member Condit, are you okay with that? Yes. So that would be in October. After October 11th, um, you know, if things go beyond that. There, there would be an agenda item that would be placed on the agenda for discussion and decision at that point. Yes. An RFP process. And you do have consensus from Council Five, all five of us. Yes, yes, please. Thank you. I would recommend a vote be taken so we have it clear in the minutes. Okay. So I'll make can, a motion. You can always vote to place an item on a future agenda. Okay. I move that um, after the October 11th deadline, the first council meeting after that deadline, we have an agenda item to consider an RFP for our future, our future legal advisor. I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but... I'll second. Nicole's not here. Oh. oh shit. Well, this so time. we have a, a motion by Mayor Pro Tem White, and we have a second by Mayor Laura. Can I have a vote, please? Um, Council Member Orozco? Aye. Council Member Knight? Yes. Council Member Condon? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem White? Yes. <coughs> Mayor Laura? Yes. That, that vote carries 5 0. Okay. That's for placing an item on a future agenda. Okay. So now the item that's before you is item 2A. I was placing, I just want to make sure that I'm clear placing an item on a future agenda for. Uh, I'm sorry, for RFP process to consider uh, legal counsel. Is that I'm sorry. Um, regarding the continuing debt restructuring? Or regarding, thank you, regarding continuing debt restructure. Um, so with that brings us to the item, sorry, 2A, uh, retention of Oric Harrington. I'm out to make a motion to, uh, to retain Oric and Harrington to represent the city in connection to the financial and restructuring challenges facing the city. I'll second that. I have a motion by Councilmember Roscoe and a second by Mayor Pro Tem White. I'll do roll call. Councilmember Roscoe? Aye. Councilmember Knight? Yes. Councilmember Condon? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem White? Yes. Mayor Lara? Aye. That motion carries. Um, with that, we will our special meeting on the July 13th, 2016 at 847.